there is a lot of skepticism out there. There is the, you know, the p apparent conflict between those that feel, no, it's not happening, and, uh, and then those that are saying it is happening and it could be dire. Uh, that is getting less and less because the evidence is getting stronger and stronger that the changes are occurring. There is a lot of concern that is expressed. In fact, up, uh, up to about a year and a half ago, I used to get approached in meetings and, uh, and pulled aside and say, how dare you talk about adaptation? You should only be talking about mitigation, reducing emissions. And the thing is, is that you, it's not either or. You have to be discussing both. On the political front, it's about getting your politicians engaged. Uh, in some ways, adaptation to climate change needs to be seen as the day job. It's nothing special, and in some ways it's nothing new. We've always been preparing for the extremes of our climate. Through the climate change duty, and the very political realities of climate change in London means that we have our politicians fully on side. And that is why the mayor is committed to producing this adaptation strategy. On the financial side, this is a tricky question indeed. Nicholas Sturden stated in his assessment of climate change that proactive action was always cheaper and more effective than re retrospective action. In London, we've been struggling to make the case for this. We recognize it as being true, but actually when it comes to paying for interventions that may not have a benefit for 50 or so years, this is a big ask. London is actually ranked ninth most vulnerable city in the world according to natural hazards. A lot of our key competitors above that, but all of the hazards which London is exposed to are climate dependent. And therefore we believe that actually we need to be adapting to climate change in order to be ahead of our competitors and remain ahead of our competitors. But also because what we learn in doing so is something that we can market to the rest of the world. Well, I think there's a number of challenges. One, there's a number of actors working on these kinds of issues, a number of uh, international donor agencies. So coordinating that um, is essential. Then the other is also at the national level, the coordination between different ministries responsible. The difficulty is sometimes that disaster risk management falls under the authority of one ministry while climate change is another. So trying to bring these aspects together is, is a challenge, but I think government realizes that they need to do this. Có thể nói là rất hạn chế. Thứ hai là cái khả năng khoa học công nghệ. Những cái rất cần có cái sự chuyển giao khoa học công nghệ để mà cho Việt Nam uh, nắm bắt được những cái uh, công nghệ mới rồi ứng dụng vào cụ thể của Việt Nam. Và vấn đề thứ ba là liên quan đến nâng cao đội ngũ năng lực của đội ngũ cán bộ nghiên cứu cũng như cán bộ quản lý liên quan đến vấn đề thiên tai và biến đổi khí hậu. Rồi à, à, vấn đề là cái... À... It has been very hard because for a long time you could find resources for research in terms of um, assessing climate change, but very little uh, resources for adapting to climate change. However, we, in the middle of that, we've been very successful, I think. We, we are the country that got uh, the first project to be financed by the GEF for adaptation to climate change in the world. What actually made that possible was the fact that we had this very practical approach. We proposed measures that are useful today and that will also be useful in the future. I think that the Colombia um uh, has the uh, wonderful experiences related with uh, that kind of, of issues. Um, we, are, we are using the uh, learning lessons and uh, outcomes of the, the, the past. For example, in 1992, with the impact of the La Niña phenomenon, in that, in that time, we, we could uh, prevent the, the most impact of the, of the La Niña phenomena in our territory. We've learned that through, through the Thames Estuary 2100 project, you need to understand your vulnerabilities and perhaps not worry too much about exactly when we're going to get X amount of sea level rise. We, we've got a fairly good idea of that, but we're, we're never going to know the answer for sure. So we've got We've developed an adaptable plan so that we can change what we're planning to do depending on how things turn out. And this is a, a major step forward. Instead of being all upset and frustrated because there's uncertainties, you actually embrace it so that you're not planning for a particular future. 
and that future doesn't occur and all of a sudden you've made a mistake, either over adapting or under adapting, you plan for a range of futures and therefore your adaptation uh, is able to take that in consideration and you can adjust it slightly or adjust it as you move along and the uncertainty is reduced as you get closer to it. We should not fall into the, the pitfall of trying to prepare ourselves for one stable scenario. We should be able, we, we should think of preparing ourselves for a trend that, that is going to be changing all the time. Our pilot project belongs to the community. It's not our project. So that, I think that, that is, in, is very important to, to tell that because um, the, uh, one of the recommendations before to implement that kind of, of the measures is to encourage of the community for that. Um, and we believe in them. I think that um, the confidence between community and national uh, organization or regional organization is the, the key strategy to success that, uh, that kind of a project. Và khi có lụt bão đến thì từ người dân họ phải lo cho mình trước. À, tức là các cái biện pháp để lo cho mình như là vấn đề về xây dựng nhà cửa kiên cố, phòng chống nhà cửa, rồi là uh, công tác uh, di dân, đấy, những cái vùng nào thấp trùng thì họ di dời và từ giác di dời rồi là họ dự trữ lương thực thực phẩm thì đó là những cái giải pháp mà tôi nghĩ rằng là cực kỳ quan trọng ngoài những cái công việc của chính quyền thì chính bản thân người dân họ phải lo cho mình họ phải biết cách đối phó phòng chống lũ lụt đó là yếu tố quyết định nhất để hạn chế và giảm nhẹ thiên tai ở Sài On the mitigation side, you know, trying to get people to save energy when it saves them money is proving a difficult sell. But on an adaptation front, where you're trying them to spend, get them to spend money on the off chance it might protect them against a one in a 50 year event, is proving even tougher. Uh, this is why adaptation needs to be dealt at a local level. It needs to be done at the localist level you can actually find, so that people actually feel it is real to them rather than something that's been imposed upon them. There are three main recommendations. First, don't try to start by using innovative technology because there's a high risk there. Try to use technology that's out there, that's well known, that people is comfortable with. Second, try to um, fund um, um, activities or projects that will have an immediate impact in the quality of life of people so that they themselves, the communities, are the, the most interested in taking care of those investments and making sure that those investments will survive over time. And uh, third, uh, try to design uh, investments to face tendencies. For the City of London here, we did take a look at how other cities around the world have tried to address similar types of issues. And some of the really interesting things that we saw were things that we were thinking about but at the same time, adaptation does not necessarily travel well in space and time. And it's to understand what made it work in those other places, and therefore its applicability to the City of London is, is prime, is a prime concern. So if you'd ask me what are the lessons that London could tell, teach other cities, I would say they were very simply four things. Um, the first thing is understand what your risks are today. You know, it's, it's relatively easy to actually map the people and assets that are exposed to the risks. The second thing is you aren't prevented from doing something by an absence of climate models. The third thing is not to treat adaptation outside the day job. Adaptation is only one of a number of risks that need to be balanced off and your adaptation options are only one of a number of options that need to be considered. And the last thing is that adaptation is for life, not for Christmas. So what works today may not work tomorrow and therefore you need to make sure your options have flexibility and you are not foreclosing options that you may want to use in the future. As the climate changes, our ability to reduce the impact of disasters will become increasingly valuable. Invest today for a safer tomorrow.